good evening, everybody. We wait a few more minutes for a few people to join. Uh, but uh, my name is Branko. I'm in Vancouver, Canada, 8 o'clock in uh, Canada and in USA. Uh, welcome, everybody. Uh, it's morning in early morning in Europe. Uh, even some people in Moscow and Dubai are watching us. Okay, so let's start. Uh, of course, we have a panelist as well. Uh, we can turn him into a host a little bit later. Uh, basically, most of the webinar is about uh, CVD diamonds, how to grow diamonds. And we have an expert from India and Dushan Simic will introduce him later. So some of you uh, already attended some of my webinars in spring. And this is very different because we're talking about a book, Laboratory Grown Diamonds, that uh, came out uh, finally. I can show you. It's here. It's quite uh, thick and quite a uh, good book, in my opinion. Uh, sorry for those who are waiting more than a month uh, for the mailing. It's uh, because we added uh, not 50, but 100 pages, not six articles, but we added uh, uh, 10 articles beside the uh, four uh, contributing authors, and Malai Hiran is one of them. We also, uh, me and Dushan, uh, were very productive. We added six new articles. So I hope you will read the book a uh, few hours, not only. Uh, a lot of good pictures. So um, I would like first uh, uh, to thank uh, people who make this book happen, uh, our sponsors. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy that uh, these are two organizations that uh, I teach a lot and Dushan as well. Uh, National Association Jewelry Appraisers as a silver sponsor, uh, Gail Levine uh, order, pre ordered a lot of books. And even more uh, from Australia, Kim Hughes from National Council of Jewelry Valuers, uh, really. Uh, order for all her members' books, and they are coming uh, from New York. Dushan is responsible for that. <laughs> uh, or we will see if we can find some faster way to deliver to Australia. And this uh, timing is good for you. It's our lunchtime in Australia, so I'm glad uh, you're with us uh, today. Um, so let me first introduce uh, uh, my countryman and a longtime uh, uh, researcher uh, and colleague, uh, Dushan Simic. Uh, we met a few days before my trip to New York, 1995. Uh, he is a jeweler, a very good jeweler, uh, the only one who was actually involved with diamonds in Belgrade, Serbia. And we just chat a little bit. And later on, of course, uh, we continue uh, to work together in New York. Uh, we did over 20 research papers together. Uh, and Dushan can just say hello now because he's there. You can see him. Uh, he can say something, but we can talk he, later on. He'll talk more about himself and his journey from Europe to Africa and Asia. Le ladies and gentlemen, dear colleagues, uh, old friends, uh, just a good evening, a good morning, a good early morning for Europeans. Good day, and uh, we are happy that you are with us, and uh, we prepare something very interesting, and uh, okay, I hope that you will like it, you know, so I'll, I'll continue later, you know. Branko, please. Yes, uh, I'm more visible. Uh, I'm going more to the shows and, and to the conferences, but we Dushan actually went to many conferences. You can see on the bottom, uh, some of them in by invitation only the biz conferences. But uh, Dushan is doing a lot of research and he will do something very, very new uh, in December uh, uh, 4th, uh, talking about uh, his uh, patent on uh, static diamond labeling and identification. And uh, hopefully next year he'll be more famous when movie comes out about origin stories that he is a main actor uh, in the movie. So more public will know about Dushan uh, quite soon. Uh, those who never took my workshop or never come to my training German Jewelry Conference, and many of you did or did not see me at the shows or uh, in Hong Kong or Las Vegas or Tucson, uh, I have uh, three chairs and uh, of course uh, to get uh, my uh, uh, Live going, I'm working in the gem laboratory uh, four days a week, Canadian Gemological Laboratory, where I uh, test uh, gemstones and diamonds, mostly diamonds, a lot of gemstones and jade, and also collecting ideas for my research projects. And since 2015, I'm co hosting with George Piramilus uh, Materian Gem and Jewelry Conferences, uh, uh, went from 50 to 80 people, and now, the last five years, very, very active with Gemological Research Industry uh, Inc. Uh, this uh, webinar is uh, hosted by this company and uh, this book uh, is published, many things I'm doing on instruments in that. So uh, I won't talk too much about myself, but I did many uh, projects and many uh, trips as well as uh, Dushan. Uh, 
I want to talk about the book because this is something uh, we started in the mid of April and even looks like we are late one month. We did record six months this book and we can see it's 181 pages plus uh, bios and other stuff. So uh, let me talk about a concept. Concept was to uh, do something new, of course, but keep the old design and keep uh, all the information that is still valid after 13 years. This book was sold in over 2000 copies, 2000 uh, seven to 2010, 15, we ran out. And then, uh, of course, it's bad, it's COVID uh, for business, but it give us some time to really put into this book. Um, so we kept uh, information in part one, basically we repeat all the information because we couldn't invent anything better about diamond types and uh, history of diamonds or changing color. But in part two, there is technology behind growing diamonds. We invited a very good uh, scientist, Boris Figelson, and of course, Malai Hirani, who will explain more what he did uh, in his article about uh, uh, CVD uh, diamonds uh, overview, uh, which is the main topic of this webinar. In part three, we combine identification from old times when diamonds were full of inclusions, uh, magnetic, uh, and easy to uh, uh, check with fluorescence, to new times where you have more difficult uh, cases, clean diamonds, and uh, basically 60, uh, uh, how many pages? I think uh, uh, more than 60 pages about notification. And uh, we have Sherry Woodring joining us from GK Laboratory, all the colleague Dushan and me are covering standard mostly, but some advanced instruments as well. And uh, summarize everything for you. In last part, it's completely new. It's about grading system uh, from new uh, point of grading, but also uh, nomenclature and very important, how to track, how to identify lab grown diamonds with uh, new patent or with new instruments. And uh, something that uh, nobody is talking about is happening but fraudulent replicas. People copying certificates of uh, big diamonds by cutting diamonds to match the uh, GI and other uh, major lab certificates. And this is basically what we will cover in these next uh, uh, six webinars. Uh, our next one is uh, October 30th with uh, uh, Tom Chatham. And Tom Chatham was one of the four companies, original companies, who stayed and still selling Lebergon diamonds. Gemis is closed, uh, uh, AOTC does not produce diamonds, they're producing equipment. And uh, uh, Apollo is uh, uh, now a long time gone. So of course, there's many other producers. We had another uh, 10 in our big table in the middle of the book, but we're happy to also have uh, uh, Tejin Lu from uh, NGTC China who would give permission to publish uh, uh, manufacturers from China and some pictures. We'll talk about this in upcoming next year book that uh, you will see more in next webinars. And Tom Chatham, uh, basically we confirm what we predicted uh, 2007 as the end of our uh, kind of uh, background or introduction that we hope that laboratory grown diamonds will show you as a part of this jewelry industry, not a threat to it. So. Uh, they are definitely part of the industry. I see more and more diamonds here coming every week uh, to appraise and to uh, test as the laboratory grown, become very popular, uh, especially in these difficult times. And then we have one topic that is very unusual, uh, but we like to open uh, uh, cans and we don't know what has come out of the can sometimes. Memorial diamonds. Um, we invited uh, Frank Ripka, uh, who comes to our conferences, who is very uh, open uh, to invite people to visit uh, their facility in Switzerland. I was there. Uh, and uh, he'll talk about uh, process, how to uh, make diamonds out of ashes, uh, uh, remains, and uh, how uh, they're doing it in, in Switzerland. Uh, this is uh, November 6. Just after that, we are very, very uh, proud to have Boris Figelson, a pioneer in making uh, diamonds in Russia. Uh, he was featured in many BBC movies, uh, and uh, the Beers was talking about him always, uh, hi, hi. He works now in Washington, a very famous Naval Research Laboratory on different projects. He is the one person who basically invented the way to remove nitrogen uh, from the cell and grow coralless diamonds more than 35 years ago. And I was in this facility in Russia 20 years ago, and Boris uh, will really be a great person to ask questions uh, how to grow diamonds. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, for 15 years, uh, our friend, uh, 20 actually, and colleagues, uh, Sherry Woodring, uh, first book, first edition of this book was 2004 with Sherry, second edition 2007 with Dushan, and now again we are back with Sherry, not as a main author, but she did a nice chapter of Micro World of HBST Grown Diamonds and CVD Diamonds, 
Uh, I know uh, many of diamonds are clean, VS and higher, but when do they do have inclusions like these uh, clouds here that are parallel uh, in one plane, this is a strong indication, or we can say it's a, a key uh, feature uh, to tell it's a not natural diamond. Uh, then after that, uh, Dushan, this is now two pre-Christmas uh, talks, uh, uh, December 4th and December 18. Uh, Dushan, uh, look at the, uh, not hundreds, but thousands of the stones uh, in New York uh, by working uh, together and after by himself. Natural, uh, especially treated color diamonds. Uh, I remember when he was uh, looking at the microscope with his uh, with technique of cross polarized filters just to check his type 2 a diamond in 2000, 2001, 2002. It was very important to know if diamond is two way or not, and he uh, developed this nice technique. And he updated very uh, good this book with that chapter. And he will talk about his patent, which is very important. How to create, induce nitrogen vacancy center in a diamond, any lab grown diamonds at the point of production. And basically just need a simple UV lamp to uh, detect this pink fluorescence and uh, uh, make a process much faster and definitely very affordable to uh, a big, uh, uh, for the trade. Uh, I will follow up with the identification and standard instruments, what is, uh, uh, fluorescence, uh, 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 my favorite uh, technique, but also say what we're doing here in, in, in a laboratory uh, or other laboratory with other advanced instruments, uh, starting with the uh, EXA, very portable uh, uh, PL uh, uh, spectrometer to infrared uh, visible and fluorescence uh, spectroscopy. And this is uh, me finishing these uh, seven uh, webinars. And of course, every time we'll have questions and you're very, very welcome uh, on the bottom of the screen is a Q&A uh, button. You can, you can text your question and to Malay, uh, most of it, but also you're welcome to, to, to ask questions to Dushan and myself. At the end, the last 15, 20 minutes or longer, we will answer uh, your questions. So what we'll do now, I will uh, go back to Dushan, uh, who will uh, tell a few things about his involvement in gemology. You can see he was uh, quite young on the top pictures we travel to many places together. He traveled to many places without me. And uh, Dushan, please uh, uh, say a few words about your uh, geological journey and then a few words uh, to Malay. And then uh, we will uh, pass to Malay uh, uh, host. Hopefully, he can be uh, to give us presentation. Okay, Branko. Thank you. Everything is good. You see me? Yes, we see. Okay, first I will start before I, I, I start to talk a little bit about myself, just to Sherry, to remind you. So this is a very rare, very rare first edition of, uh, of our laboratory grown diamond. The second one, it is from 2000. This one is from 2003, this book. And then this is from 2007 and also was uh, translated to Portuguese. And uh, finally, 2020, here is a really big one, you know, so. And uh, let's just uh, start uh, to talk about myself, uh, about only about the diamond research, where, of course, started uh, in the uh, Pancharatna, near Pancharatna, in Pancharatna, after that in, uh, in Surat. Here is, a, here is a photo in the... Uh, Indian Diamond uh, Laboratory with uh, Samir Yoshi. This is a first lab that I met. After that, uh, I met the uh, famous Indian uh, gemologist, Sajai Shri Panjikar, also Mr. Ramchandran, who unfortunately is not any longer with us, uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Sastri. And uh, also, we used to travel. Uh, all, all this stuff happened in the middle, in the middle of the 90s, uh, last century. When uh, I came to New York, then uh, Branko and me, we started to collaborate, to work together. The, here is one trip in Sri Lanka. And uh, here, it is, a, it is a conference in Bangkok in 2006, uh, when, as a... EGL USA uh, research gemologist. Uh, I presented. I presented the first uh, uh, laboratory grown or synthetic diamond mounted in jewelry. After that, I spent uh, I spent the time like a two years in India. Used to open a lab for EGL USA, and uh, in 2008 come back to 
to America and start to my work with the HPMT technology annealing, you know, mostly with the with the with the with the with the suncrest on the beginning here is a picture with the suncrest and also with the suncrest we did the one uh, really beautiful research that is uh, right now in the small book because uh, no one wanted to publish uh, this research paper they told me like uh, you are talking too much you know some information should stay in between us you know i I didn't think like like this, but uh, still, you know. And uh, the next picture is uh, something uh, very interesting. What uh, I did in the last nine years with this gentleman with the red uh, helmet. This is a, 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 a awarded a, a film di director, Jason Cohn, and. Uh, we used to travel around the world to shoot uh, really in so many facilities, on so many places, uh, production. Uh, we talk with the people and uh, really I think that uh, the movie, this is a 90 minutes movie, Showtime production uh, that uh, should be published uh, during the next year. So here we are in China with the Chinese, uh, with the Chinese uh, uh, engineers and uh, I think it will be something uh, something uh, very very interesting for our industry so and here are pictures from the conferences Branko and me really <laughs> we used to go really all around the world you know attending the conferences and meet so many great people you know and uh, also, we used to have many collaboration and good work with the, with the with ge gemologists, you know. And uh, like, uh, I think Malai, it was, uh, I think 10 years ago, somehow, somehow we came in contact. We start to, we start to, to work to, to, together. Malai needed my help in HPMT treatments uh, i needed his help uh, with the uh, with the uh, for example seeds what he will talk uh, to us uh, something about uh, and uh, really for so many years you know we became friend and uh, really we are we 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 we, we did a good uh, good job you know and uh, malay will present something uh, what is what is a real what is a real world you know because the Malay is a is a man from the factory you know who is a guy who is a building a factory school he's a guy who who is creating this who is teaching people to to do this you know and that's why we call him to be to be one of the uh, that you can ask questions uh, during the his talk and at the end and uh, uh, those uh, Many of you already got the book, but we will have a option at the end to give you the special coupon of $5 off that you can use it towards the book is 10% off. So for those who did not uh, uh, get the book uh, can uh, can do that. Uh, it's coupon is a book five, number five off. So you'll see it at the end of the presentation. Uh, Branko, it tells me here promote to panelists, right? Yes, you can promote your panelist and then to the host. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Just a question. Just my question for Malay. I would like, and I, I think it will be interesting for, for, for everybody. You know, just Malay, tell us more, your, more about yourself. How you came to do what are you doing right now? You know, and also try to connect with the, with the development of all this production in India, and uh, on the end between everything else uh, i would like to talk to give your opinion about about the 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 the, 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 the patent uh, the problem with the patent and uh, how you see the the future of this problem right now welcome and uh, so i'm promoting you as a panelist and you can you can continue please as a host Dushan. okay good uh, Welcome, uh, Malay, uh, uh, the host. Make him a host. He is number okay. three. As a panelist now. He is panelist. Just make him a host. And uh, 
we'll have around 20, 25 minutes of presentation of Malay. He has very interesting slides. Uh, uh, I think this is the first presentation, at least uh, that I know, that somebody is talking in detail uh, how to grow CVD diamonds. And uh, when you see the book, you'll be uh, very uh, surprised how much information uh, is in the book. And even uh, he put a scheme of the factory and, uh, and uh, even uh, he, he calculated actually how much uh, cost to open the factory with the 10 uh, CVD growers. So, uh, yes. So we'll start in a, in, in a second or two. And okay. uh, Mali, you, you can, yeah, Mali is a host now and uh, I give a microphone to Mali and sorry about this little, uh, we are doing first time edition and uh, we are great gemologists, but not uh, the best computer guys. So, uh, that's okay, okay. Mali, microphone is yours. All right. So thank you, Dusan. I will stop sharing and then uh, uh, actually, uh, yes. Uh, can you now uh, share your screen or? Yeah. All right, now I'm going to start my yeah. presentation. <laughs> okay, I hope everybody can see the screen. Yes, looks good. Yes. Okay, so I come from a, a single crystal diamond tooling background, and uh, I'm associated with the uh, lab from diamond, especially CVD diamond industry since like more than 12 years. And uh, I worked as a grower in the uh, for the microplasma CVD reactors for single crystal depositions. Uh, I used to run a lot of uh, different types of reactors like cylindricals, clamshells, bell jars. And uh, now I'm working as a technical consultant for setting up uh, like a factory for uh, lab grown diamonds, especially the microwave plasma CVD technique. Mali, sorry diamonds. to interrupt. If you could just come closer to the microphone to be a little bit more louder, it would be great. Okay. Yes. Thank Can you. you hear me now? Yes, much better. That's all, yeah. all right. Okay. So yeah, now I'm working as a technical consultant for Lab Room Diamond Factory. I help companies uh, choose the right kind of reactors, the right technology according to their uh, target uh, growth. And uh, yeah, all right. So we'll start with the MPCVD technology. Uh, this will be a basic overview of how the MPCVD reactor looks and works. So here you can see a reaction chamber. Uh, you can put, and you have to put like a diamond seeds on the, in this reactor, uh, inside the reactor. And uh, the microwave is powered from the top. It comes down and it creates the plasma ball here. And uh, you, insert hydrocarbons, uh, which will be used as a uh, carbon source. And carbon will be deposited layer by layer uh, on top of diamond. And uh, this, will, this is how uh, basic uh, CVD technique is. This is a typical uh, CVD reactor. It's a six kilowatt top-down system. Uh, we call it a cylindrical type reactors. So this is like a visualization of uh, different stages uh, of growth. Here on the left side, you can see uh, the holders. We call it a substrate holder. And uh, you place number of seeds on the substrate holder and uh, you start to ignite the plasma and start the deposition process. Here you can see the seeds uh, in the first few hours and after a few days, it starts to grow layer by layer. It's like almost uh, like a 3D printing of carbon on top of diamond substrate. Uh, here you can see the slice of uh, CVD diamond, which can be used again as the seed so you can recycle your own diamond as the seed. Uh, here you can see the coring of the diamonds. Uh, so whenever the diamond grows, it has this black polycrystalline outer layer. 
usually in most of the recipe, uh, some recipe doesn't have it, but usually you'll have to remove the black polycrystalline and get, get your single crystal cube here. And that cube can be cone faceted using lasers or manual routing systems into a more uh, near diamond shape. And after that, you can have your full cutting polishing diamond just as a natural diamond process. So here you have this uh, CVD type 2A seed substrate. So seeds are pretty important in how you grow the diamonds. Uh, the type of seeds and the quality in the surface of the seeds, the internal defects, inclusions, uh, stress levels, everything counts in how you uh, can, how your ultimate product will be. So this is how it looks uh, while growing. Uh, the left side is the start of the growth in, uh, and the right side is uh, after a few days, you can see the diamond is grown to at least like two to three millimeters. So this is as grown single crystal diamond uh, as comes out from the reactor. Uh, you can see the seeds reflections here at the bottom. Uh, uh, so typically, uh, whenever somebody wants to set up a CBD diamond factory, there are some factors we need to consider, like uh, what kind of power uh, you would like to have, like typically six kilowatt, but nowadays there are also 10 kilowatt and 15 kilowatt in uh, 2.45 gigahertz frequency. After that, you also need to consider the design of the chamber. Uh, ease of use and automation is uh, also important. Uh, you also need to consider like what kind of uh, plasma does the reactor gives? Is it homogeneous? Does it have like a, a low temperature gradient across the whole uh, deposition area? And uh, also the design is either open source or proprietary or is it patent protected? Sometimes uh, what happens is the supplier will tell you that this, this is the uh, deposition area, but it usually when you start to grow single crystal, it doesn't give you that particular area. It's usually smaller than that. So you need to consider and uh, be aware of that. Uh, so you can also have a choice in uh, selecting your magnetron. It will be either analog or solid state. Apart from that, the other costs like power cost, co power quality, and the efficiency of microwave power supply is also important part in deciding the right uh, reactor. Uh, right. Also, usually the uh, reactor suppliers, they are like, they don't give you the process and they expect uh, the client to set up their own uh, R&D team and do their own work to develop the recipe. So you have to be uh, considerate of that. Other factors like uh, your budget uh, applications, either you want to grow single crystal or polycrystal or conductive diamond or boron, silicon or delta of diamonds can uh, determine the type of reactor gases and recipe you will need uh, in your factory. So this is just a schematic of the manufacturing process. Uh, usually the, this part is done in house uh, where you have the reactor, you put the power in it, you put uh, the hydrocarbon gases, you'll have some seeds in it, and then it will create the rough. That rough can be laser cut, sliced and blocked in house, or you can also do it outsource and then you start the recycling process of the seeds and put the seeds back in the reactor. So, yeah. Some of the process it uh, needs further post-processing like HPHT, LPHT, or APHT and LA. And uh, that can be either done in-house or it can be outsourced. 
Okay. Uh, this will be just a basic trend of how the lab grown diamond industry is performing right now. As you can see, the performance in the last year, uh, average value per stone remains uh, relatively steady. So despite the fear that the price will come down drastically, it's remaining steady increase since last year. Uh, this will be a polished diamond index. So there are a lot of other applications for uh, CVD diamonds. Uh, it has some unique mechanical, optical, thermal, thermal electronics and uh, other uh, electrochemical properties. And it can be used in high power industry like uh, high voltage, high frequency switching, LIDAR. It can also be used in a window for defense, laser applications. Um, so CBD diamond has one of the highest thermal conductivity, I think around uh, five times of copper around 2000 or 2000 uh, WMK. So it can also be used in laser optics to increase the power of CO2 lasers. In uh... Other than that, there are long-term research and uh, applications like diamond in quantum sensors, uh, in photonic waveguide fabrications. Gallium on diamond is also pretty promising right now. Here yeah, you can compare HPHT natural and single crystal diamond. Uh, you can see the hardness uh, impurity levels. Although nowadays HPHT can be controlled, uh, but there are always some microscopic metallic impurities in it. Uh, natural diamond is uh, usually unpredictable impurities. Uh, sometimes you get clean, sometimes uh, it will be full of inclusions. But in CVD process, you have full control of your process and you can choose how you want to grow the diamond. You can grow consistently clean and uh, inclusions, impurity-free diamonds. Uh, the other thing is usually for tooling applications, like how well the tool life is, the uh, consistency in supply and uh, prices. Uh, this is just another application for uh, CVD conductive diamonds. Uh, you can use this diamond for uh, cleaning wastewater treatment in the advanced oxidation process. Uh, the diamond has very really long uh, life. It doesn't have any, it's highly chemical resistant, so you can have a very long life of the electrode and make uh, I, you can either make aqueous ozone as a water treatment solution. Uh, here is some diamond electrode comparison, uh, advantage, disadvantages. The semiconductor applications of the diamonds, uh, it can be used in the high power, high frequency applications like uh, satellite communications, uh, radar and RF amplifiers. This is just an overview of how the next 10 years of the wide band gap industry will be. You can see the market is uh, reaching around 3 billion by 2027. Although the major chunk is uh, for silicon carbide, but diamond is also playing significant role in this. Especially nowadays, the electric vehicle market is catching up and diamond will be playing a key role in this uh, industry. So for any uh, CBD diamond growing uh, venture, you need to have a strong IP management because nowadays the patent is, uh, a lot of uh, companies have started uh, patenting the process. A lot of institutes have the patents to grow the diamonds and to do post-processing on it. 
So yeah, you need to have uh, either your own uh, research team and develop your own patents, or you can have licensing opportunities uh, with the IP holders. And apart from that, you can have uh, branding and education. You'll have to create awareness and trade shows on how you want to sell the diamonds. Okay, so, yep, that's it. And uh, you can write me here. Uh, you can see the email and my contact number. And uh, yep, I'm open for questions now. Okay, great. Well, I, uh, Dushan, you can start first, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe just to start with the question, can you tell us, I mean, I, I I know this is a complicated and uh, but about this problem with the with the patents, you know, mm -hmm. how how you see solution, you know, how how it goes right now, you know, the problem that some factories have with uh, some patent on owners, where it goes, how it will be solved. Well, the uh, can you please first explain the problem, Dushan, because you assume people know it's a question of. U.S. and uh, some Asian companies uh, 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 going to court about some patents on growing civil diamonds, correct? Yeah, 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 sure, sure. Uh, it 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 was published, for example, the company from Luxembourg has uh, has is on the court with the company from Washington, right? And uh, but there are so many patents, right? It is not mm -hmm. that only one patent exists, you know. They are yeah, everywhere. There are hundreds of patents. Yes. Yeah. And. Uh, it's very hard for any new companies to understand all these complicated patterns and overlapping claims and uh, some of the patterns are kind of it's hard to say uh, if whether it is uh, applicable to their own process or not so the best way for a new startup would be to get a patent attorney and uh, get like a freedom of operate uh, from them or the second option is uh, you can have your own R&D team and set up uh, your uh, own intellectual property. Third option would be just to get uh, licensing opportunities where you play, uh, pay the royalties to the IP holders. But, uh, so where is, a, where is a, a problem? On the reactor or in, in the process? Or of course uh, it comes together. Most of but the thing is in the reactor, yeah. Sorry, go ahead. In, with the reactor, yeah. No, no, what most of the patents is related to the process. To the process. Uh -huh. How you are growing it, what is your temperature gradient, whether you are doing the post-growth annealing or you are growing as grown. Yeah, a lot of the process-based patents are there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Of course, okay, there are uh, hardware patents as well, but uh, not everybody is using the same hardware. So this is ultimately the product patent. So there's a quite a few questions for Malai, and there is one I think Dushan we answered the best. I'll first I think direct to Malai because he is our guest uh, today. Um, probably answer is simple, but maybe not. What, which is the higher profit, jewelry? Uh, application of of civil diamonds or industry industrial yeah, applications the mass, mass market is for the jewelry industry and it will be probably the largest market right now industrial will be it's slowly catching up right now it's mostly like a niche applications it does have high margins than jewelry but the volume is not there yeah i can see here in, in the canada at least in laboratory i see more cvd larger stones and more HPHT, smaller melee diamonds. This is kind of tendency what I see uh, from the trade. Okay, I have a very specific question that uh, I think you know answer, uh, and it's in the book as well. What is the cost of a reactor? I mean, the different reactors, but you can maybe say the range of the cost of the CVD reactor. Uh, the cost depends. Uh, it may, it will be ranging from say 150,000 to 300,000. Uh, it depends on how, what kind of uh, power you're choosing, what type of uh, pumping systems and uh, chamber types. Okay, in the and same direction. Mm -hmm. Okay, Dush. 
Malai, do you remember? Do you remember a slide that uh, that we have a like a list of the actually what is a factory? What we have in the book? Do you want? Do you want to? Do you have with you to show us just a little bit? You know what? What is a factory? You know what? What? What you need to have in a factory? You know. I don't have it with me right now, but I can tell you the factory usually consists of uh, reactors. Uh, it consists of the gas delivery system, which is also one of the very important part uh, of the factory because uh, leak, uh, leaks are always uh, very uh, difficult to handle and leak will create uh, issues with the uh, diamond growing. It will create your, uh, it will create a brownish diamonds in case you have leaks in your gas lines or uh, lower gas purity. Uh, apart from that, you also have like a laser systems in the, you can see the slide here. Uh, if you're okay, uh, Mali, to share this uh, from the book, I can just show quickly uh, on page yeah, 65, okay. that uh, cost of 10 MP CVD reactors, standard configuration, approximately 3.2 uh, million dollars uh, total to set up the factory. I guess, does it make sense to start with one? What is the minimum minimum number that you, normal people will start? Uh, can you tell this? Is it 5, 10, 15? Or is uh, it so it is, the cost of the setup remains the same even if you put like one reactor. So it's usually advisable to start with more than one, at least uh, five or something to make it uh, feasible economically. Mm -hmm. And there's a, a one question from uh, Catherine Wyatt. Uh, uh, she was, uh, she's from Australia. What are the main difference in the units making CVD? Uh, what you would say uh, is the main difference and the uh, results in the same uh, type of question, what are the best results for size, color and clarity compared to the reactor? What you would, mm -hmm. if you mm -hmm. can suggest something for right. your experience. Uh, so the main difference uh, between different types of reactor would be uh, the type of chambers, uh, the delivery of the plasma. So there are like uh, mainly three types of uh, delivery system where we call it top-down system, bottom-up and coaxial deliveries. Uh, yeah, so it, it, the production quality does not depend highly on the reactor itself. It depends on the grower and uh, his skills in growing and running the reactor. So yeah, you need to have a very experienced grower who can run this uh, reactor to give you a good consistent quality production. As well as seeds, as you mentioned earlier, you know. Uh -huh. Seeds, gas purity, yes, it's a- uh, Time of the growth. Yep, yes. Mm -hmm. okay, another question. Uh, some of them are anonymous, some of them are with names, so I'll do uh, how people, um, disclose themselves. Uh, thank you for the comprehensive presentation. How is the effect of COVID-19 for lab-grown diamond industry in India, especially for manufacturing side and sales side? Talking about lab-grown, yeah? Uh, yeah, so India usually there's only uh, CVD diamond growing and uh, from, from the manufacturing point of view there is no effect actually from my experience, the COVID-19 uh, pandemic have actually given a lot of time for people to start the uh, decision-making process and developing their factories. So yeah, manufacturing is ramping up uh, even in pandemic. Sales uh, is also picking up slowly and uh, as the export starts from India to other countries, it will definitely increase. Okay, uh, there is a question from Randy, uh, currently from uh, Washington State, uh, border of uh, my neighbor here in Canada. Uh, he's mentioning something about uh, uh, doping uh, of diamonds and uh, uh, how often it's done and uh, can you answer current cost per carat uh, of carat sized diamonds? Do you, I mean, is it any, of course it's a range, uh, but can you tell yeah, at least so the ratio, ratio to natural? To, okay, so usually if you want to uh, produce a colorless diamond, 
then you don't need to have any doping in it. It will be completely free of any impurities. Doping is usually performed for, for jewelry industry. It is usually for color, uh, like boron can be used or silicon can be used for make a, to make a blue diamond. And for other colors, you will have to do irradiation and HPHC annealing. The delta doping is not really for jewelry industry. It's for semiconductors where they put uh, uh, doping in very uh, thin plane in nanometer level for creating the semiconductor beam junctions. Okay, I have one question uh, from in this direction. Uh, I was studying uh, this uh, blue or gray blue diamond CVD and there are a lot of silicon there. Uh, they're more gray than blue. Uh, so why there are not so many uh, CVD blue diamonds or more blue? Because silicon, I guess, uh, create different uh, uh, absorption. But uh, how often is really uh, to make uh, color diamonds to dope with boron? Is it, uh, is it very rare or in your opinion, why they're not doing more? Uh, I know HPHT grown, they're quite common, I mean, to make mm -hmm. blue diamonds. The CVD is mm -hmm. quite rare. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are two things. There are like demand of colorless is much higher compared to blue. Uh, to make blue, you need to add boron in uh, either solid form or gaseous form. Solid form is very hard to control uh, in terms of doping efficiency. Uh, gaseous form is a little bit uh, it's not a little bit but more toxic to use so you need to have proper setup done and uh, you need to uh, make the reactor such that uh, it already has the uh, doping capabilities you, it will be very difficult to add the doping capabilities later on in the reactor mm -hmm. but in the future i think uh, after uh, after some time, probably like after a company matures the production and the colorless, they will of course go for uh, colored diamonds like blue and pinks. Okay, there's a two questions about prices. I will read them together. Uh, one anonym, anonymous. Do you think prices of LGD will go down eventually as more growers come up on the market? And one from uh, actually uh, Greek American. Uh, what is the trend of the cost? of production over the past few years? How fast are costs coming down? Basically, similar question. Mm -hmm. Well, uh, the costs are coming down, but it's not drastically coming down as it is. So what happens is the capital cost of setting up a new CVD lab is very high. So unlike HPHD process where the equipments usually are already depreciated and uh, so CBD uh, prices will be staying pretty stable over the next few years. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah. And, and also uh, there, there, there is a question for Vivek Mishra. Considering ideal condition, what according to you, to you is the gestation period for five factory factory, uh, five reactor factories? Uh, gestation period for reactor five, it, it will be close to like six months, uh, four months for the factory setup, reactor arrival, and two months for the recipe optimization. So overall, I think six months uh, you can expect. And also here I see two questions, uh, I mean, uh, uh, Catherine is talking about the same thing. The first one uh, is, uh, is, is I have heard stories of white synthetic diamond changing the color when heated by jewelers. Do you know anything about this? And also related to this, I mean, it is a very, very similar problem. What causes the grain seen in CVDs? Will they be able to reduce this future, uh, this uh, feature, feature. feature in the future? Yeah. So we uh -huh. are right now, Malay and and me, we are working on this to solve, uh, like uh, generally to to know to control. I mean to know answer, you know, to solve the problem. This is something else. But uh, Malay can start about the, the the growth, and after that, I can continue uh, about uh, about annealing, you know to explain mm -hmm. what is annealing and a little bit, you know, just 
so what was the question again? The, the question is what causes the grain seen in CVDs? Uh, the grains? The grain boundaries? Yeah. Uh, yeah. So sometimes some recipes uh, demand that you have a growth interruption. The growth process is interrupted and the diamond is kind of cleaned and put it back again in the second round of growth. And uh, if the grower is not careful, you will have a slight uh, kind of a grain boundary or a growth interruption layer, we call it. Uh, that could give you a negative effects in your final polished diamond. But it can be controlled. Yeah, everything depends actually on the time. You know, if you yeah. rush, if you want to, mm -hmm. if you want to have this uh, uh, done uh, in uh, I don't know, just the three days, uh, result mm -hmm. is different than when you put like a, for three weeks. Yes, the correct. people people are expecting to solve this problem mm -hmm. with the H pinch T annealing. And then this is another problem that uh, H pinch T annealing could be very different, you know. Even even when you are asking that the, up the jewelry, uh, up the jeweler is heating, this is also kind of the annealing, you know. And then annealing comes up to 2,400 Celsius. The jewelers it it goes around 500, 600 something like this Celsius, you know, and. Uh, Dushan, is, is it, is is it possible it. to change color just by heating it with the jeweler, not by cutting, by heating it with the jewelry torch? No, actually, 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 you will. If the stone is previously, previously H pinch T heated, but heated on the way on the relatively low temperature, let's say 1900, what usually people are doing for the, let's say, long period of time, what is a 10 to 20 minute, not like a sun crest, uh, they did this in uh, one, two, three minutes on the 2400. Then what is happening when it's heated, not only heated by jeweler, it could be heated only by polisher. And the, when the polisher press too much, you know, what Malay, you know how they are polishing right now and seeds, you know, they put much more weight, you know, creating more temperature on the, on the stone, you know. And simply, simply they will, they will like uh, return the previous color. Like, uh, because the uh, annealing process is uh, reversible, you know, it goes up and down, up and down, you know, and then uh, you have to, you have to, you have to know how to do this, you know. Of course, uh, like uh, high temperature annealing is very expensive, dangerous, stuff like this, you know, and the low temperature doesn't give results and doesn't make a stone stable. If it's not stable, all structure inside, it could be, the color could be reversed, you know. Plus, if something is doped uh, from the, from the wheel, from the, from the, could be, right now, Malai, we did, uh, we did uh, uh, analysis, chemical analysis, and the CVD stones are with the iron, you know, what most probably is doped from the, from the, from the polishing wheel, you know. Yeah, possible. possible. Okay, there is one uh, because we have a lot of gemologists, lots of appraisers. I will uh, read one gemological question um, that is uh, very, very uh, interesting. I heard about CVD overgrown on natural diamond. It is it produced a lot of commercial or just only a little bit for a trial? I can tell you just what I heard and what I see, most heard and see, uh, that is done. Uh, at the Sibjo conference in Bahrain, I think SCCF was showing uh, one or two stones. And then uh, it's published in Journal of Gemology by a group from China, NGTC. And one of the one of the author, Tajin Lu, was nice to give me the article for the next book coming up next year on diamonds. So I know it's done. I know Russians are working on this. I know people approach me uh, to the conference, at the conference uh, to do this. Now, question is how often is done? I know it's more experimental in China, but is it done in <laughs> India? Uh, I guess it's a question for you, Malay. No, it's right. Only like testing right now, and uh, it's not that all the diamonds, uh, all the natural diamonds, can be overgrown into a CVD diamond because CVD grows in particular orientations, and uh, natural diamonds are usually it doesn't it's like it does it's not on the same orientation always. So yeah, it's very difficult. You have to pre-plan your from the rough stage, 
to if you want to grow a CBD diamond on the natural diamond. Okay, it's but I know I, I know it's not easy to not easy to detect uh, from point of spectroscopy. You need a kind of fluorescence, uh, a more imaging, uh, to see it, uh, the difference because very thin I layer. Think diamond view can yeah easily. Yeah, diamond view. That. That's right. Uh, this is for you, Malay. Is there a difference in cost to manufacture between CVD and HPHT? And what is the average output from one reactor? Difficult question, but average, I guess. Yeah, I mean, average per day, output per, from per, say, per week? Yeah. yeah, average output from, say, a six kilowatt type system would, uh, it, it highly depends on the target color. If the color is, say, GH, then the average output will be like 100 to 120 carats as grown GH and uh, for lower colors, it will be like uh, up to 200 carat for IJ uh, color grades. Uh, difference between HPHT and CVD cost of production is very hard to say, but uh, it all depends on how you set up the factory, where is the, what is your power cost and all. So another question from Spiro uh, from USA. So is there, more effort in industry to grow larger diamonds or bigger quantities per growth cycle? I know it's a sweet spot, half carat to one carat, and this is where industry, what I see most on the market, but what is the uh, upcoming, what is the near future? What do you, what do you see it as a, as, a, as a direction? Well, near future, I mean, uh, people will, right now also people are able to produce up to 40 carat of uh, CVD rough in color lead grade. Uh, I don't think people will be regularly producing like 50 carat, 100 carat. It will be kind of uh, just one off thing to understand the capability of the one. Uh, the most important thing for uh, any player right now is to produce uh, consistency and uh, high quality color grade. Mm -hmm. Ma Malay, what is the largest uh, uh, factory in India? How many reactors has the largest factory? If you have information, huh? Um, okay, uh, <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. It it, it is a wrong question. <laughs> no it's not in the I mean, book, Dushan. It's not in the it, book. <laughs> it is not in the book. <laughs> no. Okay. So I mean, total, the, like there are like almost five hundred reactors in India. Wow, that's a lot. Total, yeah, total, yeah. <laughs> okay. So somebody didn't hear the answer, maybe the answer, but we didn't. What is the biggest diamond you grow, Malai? If you can tell, best color and clarity. I've seen five carat CVDs and 10 carat uh, HPHT colorless and 20 uh, colored colored one. This is what I saw and tested, but I, I didn't see latest because of COVID mm -hmm. was happening this year, last year. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, it depends on the, so I had set up the factory and the client decide what uh, the carrot they want to make. And usually it's like uh, seven to ten mm square, so the carat weight ranges from four to twelve carats. Mm -hmm. And after polishing, cutting, uh, HPST annealing, it will be like GH VS type. Okay, this is one is quite technical uh, from Ayai Kenny. Uh, what about LPHT? Well, for those who don't know, LP means low pressure, high temperature treatment of CVD has grown to enhance color of diamond. But then it says, does reactor response to increase temperatures at 2200 degrees? Uh, temperatures are much lower in CVD, what I know. Um, but LPHT is l more, more, for the, more for different uh, type of equipment. Uh, what I know is not possible to improve color so much, more like a change so color to yellowish, not colorless. Yeah. I can I can say so, something about this. Like uh, I think eight years ago, I did experiments with the with the with the LPHT, and um, I used to heat the diamonds in on the in the vacuum on the on the regular uh, 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 pressure up to two thousand nine hundred Celsius. Diamonds survive after I learned how to do this, you know, but uh, nothing happened, nothing happened. I mean, the color cannot be changed without the temperature, uh, without the pressure. So 2,900 Celsius, it was the temperature. But... Uh, yeah, I mean, it depends on the initial composition and initial uh, 
NB centers in the CVD exam. But usually LPHT can be done. Uh, it's not a consistent process and it's not very controllable like HPHT. Uh, anything from 1800 to 2200 can give you some effect in increasing the color of the diamond. Really? Yeah. It can be done in situ as well and the plasma did, itself is over 2500 degrees C. Did you work on this or someone told you? No, there are already papers published. And back in 2009, 10, I think. Very interesting. I, I mean, yeah. okay. Dushan and me started 20 years ago, actually, our research career in HPHT treatment of natural diamonds. And uh, it's quite interesting. For me, if you can tell, uh, how do you know percentage of CV diamond that are going to HPHT process? Because now I see here, at least from some major producer in America, they are claiming that their stones are not HPHT enhanced. They're trying to sell it for the higher premium because they're not treated. Like tendency to separate HPHT treated CVD and as grown CVD. Do you think it will uh, be a difference in price and how often are the HPHT treated? My, my last question. I mean, so from the global production, I think maybe 70% are, or more than 70% is HPHT treated. Uh, to get a premium for as grown, I don't think usually because if you're doing as grown, then uh, your cost of production is less than what you are. I mean, for people who are doing HPHT, you have to add the cost of HPHT in your production. Mm -hmm. So yeah. it should be more actually for the treated yes. one. I think we do very well. Uh, we are exactly one hour now. Uh, officially, we said one hour because in my previous spring webinar, some people complained my webinar is too long, one hour and a half, two hours, two and a half, the practical. So, uh, believe it or not, Dushan and Malai, we were able to answer 17 questions in 15, 20 minutes, which is quite good. A lot of interest. There's one more, uh, more commercial, maybe interesting from a wider audience. How is the beer stand on retail pricing affecting the rest of the industry? I'm talking about now India and China, uh, because the major producers are in China and India. Uh, yeah, so DBS stands, I mean, of course, it's uh, reducing the margins of the growers. Uh, it's also hampering the fresh investment in the lab-grown diamond industry. But uh, yeah, I think even at that price, is uh, a sustainable and profitable uh, industry can be maintained. Okay. So I would like you uh, to thank Malai for his time and answering questions. If something comes up in the next two, three minutes, we'll of course give you again the the microphone but if you can turn me back to host uh, i would like to show last slide and uh, and mention that uh, or just uh, close your presentation and, and uh, yes thank you uh, so basically uh, uh, who wants to read more there's a uh, 15 pages uh, of uh, on cvd diamond uh, wrote written by malai uh, hirani in our book Lot of details, lot of information, lot of diagrams, lot of technical stuff. We try to a little bit raise the level of our book by having Boris Figerson and uh, Malay uh, uh, Hirani as our guest uh, co-authors. Uh, the rest of the book is uh, hopefully uh, readable and written in an easy to understand way, gemologically speaking. And uh, uh, so uh, I would uh, just like to... Uh, share our last slide uh, that uh, we have many other webinars we don't have time for that we have to come back again uh, we'll talk about this uh, uh, later uh, uh, sherry woodring from gkl uh, laboratory in new york uh, we'll talk about this uh, in november webinar she opening our geological talks uh, and then we will talk uh, dushan as well of course uh, on this topic and myself as a gemologist working uh, all of us uh, 20 years plus uh, uh, testing uh, uh, different uh, laboratory grown diamonds and, and treaty diamonds. So again, uh, many, many of you ordered the book uh, and uh, they are really in the mail as we speak, uh, uh, but we cannot control uh, uh, Canada Post or US Post. Believe it or not, one package returned from me from England just uh, with some instruments without explanation. I guess the very strong uh, 
measures because maybe it was going via US, uh, so, so stamp the return it. So, but we did, uh, we do, we did print it and uh, we we'll printing much, many more uh, next week or two. Uh, I'm very proud to announce that in these difficult times, we got 500 bulk order of the books plus 100, almost 90, 90, five almost 100 single orders from four continents like 15 countries so it's mean this is a very hot topic uh, and uh, i encourage you to who do, those who didn't buy a book uh, to get it or to ask us questions or just come to webinars uh, they are free to attend um, we want to share our information uh, i want to thank dushan for his time it's midnight in new york now <laughs> and he's still there uh, and some of you believe it or not uh, listening in uh, uh, toronto new york uh, and some of you uh, wake up very early in Moscow and Dubai, and uh, I think Australia did the best with the lunchtime. Uh, India uh, also listen. Uh, now it's early morning in India, uh, but we couldn't please everybody. So what is good news? We'll we'll record this webinar a little bit, edit uh, for a little a tiny uh, um, uh, change mistakes, or and uh, put put it on our website. So then you can share with your friends or colleagues, and in your uh, leisure time. So if anybody has anything uh, any to, to say, Malay or Dushan, I would give you the uh, microphone. But basically, this is the end of our uh, uh, presentation. And uh, we hope to see you at some journey, at some conference next year. Uh, we, I do plan to come to Tucson, but we don't know if it will happen. And uh, hopefully Dushan will be in Las Vegas promoting the book next year or some other show in Hong Kong if it's happening. So Malay, uh, thank you again uh, for your time. Thank you, Malay. Really, uh, it thank was you. good. Thank you. And thank you, Dushan, uh, for thank your... You. Dushan, Dushan uh, really uh, knows this topic very well. He is consulting for people who are growing diamonds for many years. He visited many factories in China, India, US. I was more uh, going to Russia and Korea and Dushan uh, and US, but so we do have experience. Uh, I'm more uh, testing them as geologically speaking, but Dushan knows the process very well of growing diamonds, um, at least. Uh, so it's very unique combination uh, in his uh, experience. So uh, next time, uh, October 30th, it will be morning, uh, 8 o'clock uh, in Vancouver and uh, LA, 11 o'clock in, in, in US. And uh, hopefully Australia will catch up around uh, 10 o'clock in Perth and 12 midnight in, or, or less or after in uh, Sydney. So uh, thank you a lot and appreciate your time uh, and uh, hope to see you again. Uh, thank you for staying. Uh, most of you stay until the end, so it's mean you're interested in the topic. So I really appreciate that you stay until the end. Thank bye, you. bye bye. Bye bye, Dushan. Bye.